Good morning. My name is Raudel Garza. I'm with Harlingen Economic Development Corporation. I'm the CEO here in, in Harlingen. And this morning, I'm going to talk to Josue Garcia, who is the Cameron County Bridge Director. And we're going to talk about one of our assets here in Harlingen, which is the Free Trade Bridge at Los Indios. Uh, we're doing this basically to try to um, promote some of the economic development assets that Harlingen has for uh, the International Economic Development Council's Economic Development Week, which is this week. So Josue, thank you for being on uh, our little webinar here. Uh, please go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on at, uh, at the Los Indios Bridge. Certainly, Rodel, thank you for, for inviting me. It's always a, it's a pleasure to, uh, you know, to share with, with the folks that are involved. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, we, we think about crossings just as being, you know, people going back and forth, cars and, and transportation, commercial. So, but the bridges in themselves have a life of their own, which, which is very, uh, uh, very unique and very important. And, and, you know, as we mentioned here in the, in the slides is, you know, every bridge is unique in its own situation. Uh, the Los Indios Bridge, you know, uh, for Cameron County offers uh, offers something that none of the other bridges here, uh, you know, in Cameron County, and, and that is the the cold room storage, which uh, you know, depending on the time of the year, is it's when you know it gets used the most. But but our uh, our 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 progress here has been slow, uh, but uh, what we're doing to get up to speed uh, is, is to get our name out there. Um, we had scheduled, obviously, to be on a, uh, uh, in Monterrey this month and in Mexico City the following month, but unfortunately, those have been pushed out. Um, nonetheless, you know, one of them is, is, is just for commerce and, and trucking uh, associations so people can understand so we can get to the growers so we can get to the uh, to the actual users uh, get uh, get beyond the, uh, the the folks that are along the border uh, that uh, you know the uh, the brokers the US brokers the Mexican customs brokers so once we start doing that you know we'll be uh, well, hopefully we'll, we'll be drawing uh, more traffic uh, as far as that is concerned. Another uh, thing that, you know, we've been doing is the, uh, the, the, the crossing of the windmill parts. Uh, that's been a big, uh, a big part. And, and so the special crossing just came just in time because we've been doing a lot of crossings uh, uh, southbound. Uh, on, on the windmill parts uh, going in, into Mexico, which is which is a good thing, you know, because uh, those are big chunks of revenue that <laughs> they cross, uh, and normally yeah. they're two or three at a time. Yeah, um, going back to the cold storage, just to remind folks is that uh, that was actually a joint project between the Cameron County, the city of uh, Harlingen and the city of San Benito with the Harlingen EDC kind of coordinating uh, the construction of it. but. It was really uh, something that was done a couple of years ago to try to encourage uh, produce companies to ship through the Los Indios Bridge so that um, they wouldn't have to worry about uh, breaking the seal or the envelope, if you will, on trucks because uh, they're going to be backing up into a, an area that's a controlled environment, if you will. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and uh, you know, that is something that that you know that happens uh, in that environment uh you know the trucks get backed up they they get offloaded uh the uh customs uh you know the you, the cbp goes in to the trucks in into the uh storage and uh, inspects whatever they need to inspect and they load it back up again without advancing the life of of whatever is on there but whatever perishable item is on there it you know it stays neutral, which is, which is what we wanted to begin with, um, to be able to offer that service and and definitely uh, you know it was, it was a uh, you know the Harlingen Economic uh, 
council, you all, you all, uh, I guess, uh, took the bull by the horns uh, initially and, and spearheaded the, uh, the construction of this, which is, which is, it turned out to be a good thing for, for, you know, all three entities involved. Yeah. Now going back to the, to the turbines and the, the wind blades, um, <coughs> there's now a manufacturer in Matamoros that's manufacturing a lot of these blades. So I guess that's some of the activity, but some of the other activity is from other uh, parts of the world, blades coming in through the port of Brownsville and then being shipped down into Mexico. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, that, that's exactly what happens. Uh, so th there's a lot of folks involved in this thing. Uh, and, and so our part is just to, to make sure they have a safe uh, and efficient travel through our bridge. Uh, and uh, so, so that's why we built a special lane uh, made it wide enough to where, you know, the, uh, the, the big, the, the motors themselves are pretty big compared to the blades themselves. Uh, when they're up in the air, you can't really appreciate, you know, how big they really are. So, you know, uh, we made it wide enough, 34 feet to where, you know, the, uh, the width to be able to go by, uh, which is, uh, uh, a good thing because mostly, um, Anything that's wide, any anywhere between here and, and Rio Grande City uh, and West, if there's anything that's really wide, everything gets sent through Los Indios southbound uh, because of you know uh, because of the installations that we have that are that are that are going to accept that, which is which is a good thing for us. And we at every time we and uh, in, in situation we get we we bring this out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what else is going on? How are you guys uh, doing in terms of, uh, you know, traffic and handling, uh, you know, issues with uh, the COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, the, you know, the, the president, you know, issued out a, uh, a mandate uh, on March the 20th, as far as having essential versus non-essential crossing. Now, what does that mean? Uh, you know, people who are U.S. citizens, People with green cards, you know, those people can can go in and out uh, every day. Uh, the people with uh, visas, those are the people that are restricted from coming in. In other words, you know, people who who come in for enjoyment, for you know, whatever that would be, eating, uh, vacationing, or whatever. Uh, those folks are not being allowed to cross. Um, so that's what really has brought, you know. Uh, a lot of the things to, you know, to uh, not a halt, but, you know, thankfully, uh, you know, it's, it's slowed down, uh, slowed down and we see it everywhere. Um, so, uh, and another thing that happened was that uh, here in Cameron County, the, uh, the uh, CVP at, uh, from, from the Laredo district, which in, includes everything from the Rio, to Brownsville, uh, closed off some some of the hours or minimized hours, so free trade and the BNM bridge were were given uh, lesser time for autos to cross going in and out, and uh, the the commercial is not affected. Commercial traffic, the hours did not change. Just the just the uh, POVs, what we call the privately owned vehicles, those are the ones that were uh, the hours were cut. And, and so that's one of the things we've been sharing with our folks and that happened on April the, the 6th. And, and that should, you know, that should end once this, uh, the essential versus non-essential crossing comes about on May the 20th. That's gonna be the end, end date. Uh, and that's what we're working with right now. So we're doing some internal workings, you know, the. Uh, you know, doing uh, work within within the, the the bridge span. You know, the striping and a lot of things that I don't think we've ever done. So it it's, it it looks sharp. Uh, and obviously the uh, the uh, the northbound lane that we that, that we worked on that's being utilized as well and it's really helped at the peak uh, hours. Uh, the Transmigrante project that we had uh, on the DAP. Uh, that is uh, really on hold right now. Uh, one, because of the situation, 
uh, but two, the, the cost was a little higher than what we had really projected it to be. So that's something that, you know, we, we told CBP that, you know, for, for right now, we need to put that project on hold. Uh, okay. But, you know, there's, there, there's always, you know, things going on, uh, you know, the Congressman uh, is very involved with, with our, with our bridges, with, uh, with the Los Indios, especially because he tries to uh, obviously uh, to funnel a lot of uh, business through there. So he's thinking about, you know, new business that we could do. And, and so I, you know, I thank the Congressman Villa for, for being very uh, upfront and, you know, allowing us and, and helping us to do that, not only him, but his staff, which is, which is a good thing. And we really appreciate that. Right. So um, you had some other data you were gonna share with us, that you think? Yeah, a lot of it is, is the, the, a lot of the information uh, that, that I presented, uh, the numbers, the, the total, these are the free trade uh, bridge numbers, total crosses from October to March, that's a two quarters. Um, and I guess if you look to the right, uh, the numbers, uh, we're doing real good in January, February, and really up and down. But when March came around, when the president issued his mandate of uh, essential crossings, you could see the, the numbers being affected there. And those are total crossings. This next slide is just vehicles, just vehicles alone. Um, and this other one is, the next slide is, is a truck traffic. As you can see, the, 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 the truck was not affected. Uh, the truck traffic has really just come down uh, uh, about 30, 37% or so, uh, which is a good thing. And it's basically what we're seeing all up and down the, the southern border. That, that's about how much traffic um, is we're, we're getting there. And that is, it, is, is a result of, in our case, the maquiladoras, uh, being, you know, working on skeleton crews. So that's something that, that, you know, that all everybody's being faced with at this time. Uh, and these are the April numbers and you, and you can really see there were, were how much of a, an impact. Uh, this is the first full month that this came into effect. So, uh, uh, right. So we had, um, some, uh, executive orders come down in terms of travel into the United States, but there's also some restrictions traveling into Mexico, which would have an impact on our numbers as well, correct? Right, right. Yes, uh, you have uh, you have the uh, Department of Health in Mexico checking uh, for, for people going in. Uh, in in uh, the Los Indios uh, bridge in particular, we're not seeing that as much as we are in, in Matamoros. So we're, we're, we're really not seeing, you know, people being, uh, being uh, intervened uh, with uh, there at the Los Indios Bridge. So uh, the next, uh, I think it's something that, that I presented back in January, just, just to see the autos, the auto crossings uh, from the last five years. Uh, then we have the truck crossings where we saw, uh, you know, a big increase. Uh, that was a, a, a good trend that we had, that we had going on. And in this other slide um, is what we've, we've talked about, the cold storage, the northbound commercial lane, the special crossing renovation, and also the, uh, you know, what I've just, uh, the last item we talked about was a Transmigrante uh, TAP program on hold. Right. Uh, and so that's just a slide of, uh, of what the cold storage looks like. And this is a slide of the northbound commercial lane where we, uh, where it's, where it was widened. So when cars were, uh, because there's, there's many times, especially on weekends when truck cars are backed up, uh, and, and so the trucks have a, uh, their, their own lane uh, to, to use. So that was the primary purpose uh, there to, so commercial traffic would not have to wait for, for the regular POVs. Uh, this other one is the, uh, 
the, the special crossing that we talked about lane. And this is just a, a slide on the, on the, you know, the windmills, the blades crossing. And this is what we talked about as far as the, uh, the migrant uh, on the donations acceptance program to, to, to make the area a, a little better for our, for our brokers that are going through there. Right. So, right. so that's where, that's where we're at, uh, Robert. Uh, you know, that's, that, that pretty much concludes our, uh, okay. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate that information. And obviously for us, um, you know, the Los Indios Bridge is also part of the overweight corridor. So overweight trucks can come in through, through the Los Indios Bridge and go all the way to our port, to the port of Harlingen and to our airport and our industrial park as well. So up um, FM 509. Um, so obviously that's a, a good selling point for us and it, it really is an asset for us. And uh, thank you again so much for, uh, for having some time here with us and talking a little bit about the free trade bridge at Los Indios and that uh, wonderful Harlingen asset. Yes, sir. All right, take You're care. Welcome. Yes, sir, thank you.